So here we are at SQL 1. Now, which one are we going to head to? Do you think we should head to our management studio? Or do you think we should go over and go to our configuration? So, studio, configuration manager. Now, if you know the answer and you're watching this with somebody, don't tell them. Well, SQL Server Configuration Manager is actually where we're going to go to set this up. We're not going to touch the Management Studio whatsoever. Now, when we're in here, we've been here a couple times now. We've worked on our SQL browser to make sure that's working. And you notice here that it stopped again because it's still set as manual. Now, let's take care of that quickly because we are going to need this, especially for what we're doing. So let's go and do what we did last time. In the last lesson, we came in here. We set the account for it. But this needs to be set as well. It needs to be set to automatic. Let's start it up. Perfect. Now, remember what our SQL Server browser does? It allows us to be able to go over to SQL 2 and not just see SQL 2, but also be able to see the other SQL instances. That's really important to note. So it does need to be running. Now, let's go all the way to the bottom here. You're going to see SQL Native Client 11.0 Configuration going to notice that we've got aliases here. And it's really as simple as this. We come here, we right click, we select new alias, we give it the new alias. And like we talked about a minute ago, let's actually use that. Let's use the SharePoint SQL, SP SQL. And we'll set the port number for 1433. And server, well, we're going to use localhost. Let's apply that and OK. So most people would think that we're done right there. That's it. It was easy. It's over with. Well, let's go check. Let's go open up our management studio for a moment. And the reason we're opening this up is because if the alias is working properly, then we should be able to connect to it. So let's go take a quick look at that. All right. So here we are, and you see I've already got it set for the SQL alias. Let's click Connect. Let that run for just a moment. Remember what I said before, if this isn't popping up for us because of the time frame we expect it to, we're going to get an error. So right now, we're going to get an error. So let's see what error gives us today. A network-related or instance-specific error occurred while establishing a connection to SQL Server. The server was not found or was not accessible. Now, I'm going to stop right there. And the reason why I'm stopping right there is you've seen this error in previous lessons. This is what happened when we didn't have the browser working. We weren't able to see the witness. So why now all of a sudden are we getting this? We went back here. We checked our services. We made sure SQL Server Browser was working. So let's jump over and realize that aliases need to be set up in two methodologies. They need to be set up on our 64-bit, which is where we just set them up. But we also have our 32-bit alias. A lot of people kind of miss this one. We have to make sure that we set a new alias in both of them. So let's do that again. We're going to set it up for SPS SQL. We're going to set it up for the correct port, 1433. We're going to set the server to be localhost. And let's click Apply. All right, let's go back. So here we are, back to our management studio. We've got our error here. Let's click OK. Let's click Connect again. And voila, here's SPS SQL. And you'll notice that it's got all the databases that we had previously. And it looks the exact same as when we went to SQL 1. And that's because we're just changing the alias on it. So are we done? Well, we're done inside our Management Studio. We're also done inside our Configuration Manager. So these can go away for now. But what we need to do is we still need to get people to come over here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to shoot over to our DC. And we're going to set up our SQL alias to have a DNS record to point to SQL 1 right now. So in our DC, we're actually going to want to go to our tools. We're not going to sites and services. We're actually going all the way down because we want some DNS records made. So we're going to open that up. And remember, we're in Global Mantics. So I want to actually expand this. And I'm going to expand that too. You notice we can expand it this way, but I'm going to put it over here for now. Now, First thing I want to know here is you're going to see that we've got records, A records, for every single one of our servers. So I want to see what SQL 1's is. If you look all the way here, here's SQL 1. It's 77715. 
So that's what we want our SPS SQL to do. So we're going to say a new host. I want it to be SPS SQL. And I want the IP address to be 7.7.7.15. Add the host. And this always goes blank and allows us to continue adding more. I'm just going to close that. What you're going to notice is that SQL 1, 77715. SPS SQL 7715. That way we can connect to it via its alias as well and actually be directed to it, which is great. So that's all we have to do. Our SQL alias is set up really easy. We set a DNS record to point over to it. We are good to go. Now that leads us to our next one. And we're actually going to start here because our next one is the NLB. Well, the NLB is going to have a different IP address and it's going to have to have an FQDN that is different than turning around and saying SP 2013 FE1 as an example. So we're going to have to go and create an actual A record for it as well. So SQL this is now done. We've completed that. We're now moving forward to set up our network load balancer. So we're going to go here now and we're going to go for a new host and our network load balancer, right? We're actually going to call it intranet. So intranet.globalmantics.com will be its full FQDN and its IP address, we're going to give it one. This one doesn't exist yet. We're going to give it 7.7.7.77. Why? Just because in this type of environment, that's really easy for me to remember. But depending on what your IP structure is, what your network layout is, you may want to use specific IPs for it. So I'm going to add the host. Perfect. Created successfully. We exit. Let's go all the way down here. And you'll see that we set this up 7.7.77. .7 and we're going to actually be using that IP when we create our actual NLB because that's going to be the IP address of our network load balancer. So when somebody goes to their browser and types in intranet or intranet.globalmantics.com, it's going to direct them to the 7.7.7.77 .7 IP, which is actually the network load balancer. It's going to actually receive that request. And it's going to have inside of it the actual addresses for our front end one and our front end two. And it will send the commands out to whichever one it needs to at that given point. It will load balance between the two of them. So we've got all this set up. Let's clean up behind ourselves. Minimize that down. Perfect. Let's go now and we're going to go jump into our front end servers. So here we are. We're on our front end one right now. So FE1. What we're going to need to do before we do absolutely anything is we're going to need to install our NLB on here. So we're going to go to manage. We're going to add roles and features. Now an NLB is not a role. It's actually a feature and we'll get to that in just a moment. This is just the initial page. You can skip this page by default if you want to. So we're going to go role based or feature based installation because we want a feature. The server selection, we're going to leave it as the server right there, which is the server we're on, so that's great. We're going to ignore roles. We're not going to add a role. We're not going to do anything here. But you'll notice that roles are things along the lines of Active Directory, DNS, Hyper-V, Remote, all of those things. Features are going to give us a little bit more of a drilled down program type. And what I mean by that is by giving us BitLocker functionality, a client for NFS, a lot of things to that, but what we really want here is our network load balancing. Now we want to include the management tools, so let's make sure we add those as well. Or it's going to be really hard setting that thing up. Let's click next and let's install. So while this is installing, one of the cool features is we don't have to sit here and watch it. We can actually just exit right out of this now and close it down. We don't need to pay attention. What we'll see is this right here. And the notification will actually show us how it's installing. All right, let's pause on this one and let's get over to FE2 quick. Because if we get to our front end too, we can install our network load balancer there as well. All right, so we're on our second front end now. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. We're going to skip the front page. Take a role-based or feature-based installation because we want a feature. We'll leave it as the default local server. And add no rules. And in our features, we'll add network load balancing. 
Make sure we add the management tools. Next, install. Now we're just going to leave this page here and we're going to go jump back again to front end two while this finishes itself off. So we left front end two and we're back to front end one now. You notice that it says the installation succeeded. We're good. We can actually exit this task because it's been completed or we can always go down and look at the task details. But right now I'm more concerned about making sure that we have that. Okay. Now tools, we're going to click on it. And you're going to notice now that we have our network load balancing manager. So let's open that up. All right. So we have our load balancer. But one of the things to know about the NLB is it's going to take one of the NIC cards away. So we actually need to go take a look at our network cards to see what we've got and which one we're going to utilize. So I'm actually going to come down here for a moment and I'm just going to open up my network and share center. What I want to do is I want to go to change adapter settings. Now notice we've got three of them here. Now the one I want to utilize is going to be Ethernet 3. I'm going to leave Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 to do what they have to do. But 3 is the one that was added to these servers to make sure that we could set up NLB. But let's make it a little easier on us though. Let's actually name them NLB. That way we know exactly what it's there for. So now that we've got it there, the other thing we need to know is what's its IP address? So I can come down here and go check what would statically set to it. That's one way to do it. The other way I can come to it is I can actually just double click it. We come over here, click details, and we've got our IP address. It's 777.181. Okay, so we know that this one's 181, and we're going to utilize that in a moment. Let's just minimize those to get them out of the way. We also need to know what the IP address is of front end 2. So let's go back to front end 2, check it for a moment, and make sure that it's installed. And we're going to make sure as well that we find its IP address. Okay, so here we are. Everything's installed. Perfect. We're going to come here. We're going to right click again, just like last time. Open Network and Sharing Center. Change adapter settings. And again, Ethernet 3. Well, make it easy for us again. Let's rename this to NLB. So the other server was 181. And this one is 182. Okay, that makes it nice and easy. So front end 1, 181. Front end 2, 182. Close that, close that, close that, and we can leave that. So here we are, we're back to our first front end. So this is front end 1. Let's go to our tools. Let's get our network load balancing manager up. What we're going to do is we're going to go create ourselves a new cluster right now. So new cluster, the host, SP2013 FE1. Now, I want to say one quick thing here. And what I want to say here is that we want to use the FQDN of it. There are multiple IPs for it. If we try to utilize it via the IP of 7.7.182.181, 181 will work because we're on that server. 182 will actually put the network load balancing manager into not responding for eternity. So just an FYI, use the FQDN when we've got multiple NIC cards sitting there. So let's go connect to this. Nice and easy for us. We see our NLB right there. Let's take that. We'll click next because that's perfect. All right. Now here is our cluster. Now, if I remember correctly, we set this at 7.7.7.77. And our subnet mask is going to be 255, 255, 255.0. Okay, so perfect. Let's click Next. Now, our full internet name is going to be Intranet. So there's a little bit of a tongue twister for you. All right, I'm not going to try to say that five times fast. I'm actually just going to go click Next. We're going to allow it just to keep the full port range open for right now. So let's click finish. Now you notice we've got this cute little graphic. Looks like it's actually from Windows 3.1 of the little hourglass. We're just going to wait for that in a couple seconds, which should happen. 
is if everything goes well, that's actually going to take the entire box and, yeah, it kind of beat me to that, didn't it? Well, there you go. It's going to turn it into a green box. So, we got beat to the punchline on that one, but that's okay because I still like to see it green. Now, we're going to go here. We're going to right-click. We're going to grab another one. This time, we're going to grab SP2013 FE2. Connect to that box. Well, we received an access is denied. Not too bad. We're just going to come in here. We're going to put in our our administrator password. It's going to re-go with our new credentials. Bring back what we need. Perfect. So we're going to take the NLB here. We're going to select next. That's perfect. We have the 182 that we wanted to see. Leave default status started. We're going to leave it with the same port range. And again, we just wait for it to turn into a little green box. And I beat it this time. So we'll just give it just a moment. As soon as that turns into our little green box, we've got exactly what we were expecting. If it turns into a red box, then we've got some problems. So perfect. It's converged. We're set. The internet is set at 7.7.7.77. Wonderful.